Hey folks, JD here, and I've had a 3D printer now for about five days. Now, give me, let me give you a bit of background before we go any further, and I'll, I'll rush through this quite quick. So, when I was in college, uh, years and years and years ago, a long time ago, uh, the first course I ever did was mechanical engineering. I was fascinated by how things worked, still am. So, I decided to do mechanical engineering, create things, build things, CAD, CAM, very, very uh, used to that particular process. The home manufacture, CNC machines, love it, and did all that for a few years. Then I decided to switch, and I went into IT, and I've been in IT for the past 16 years ever since sense so when it comes to having a 3d printer i jumped at the chance i've been following 3d printer prices for about four years i've settled on one after looking at so many looking at so many reviews looking at everything talking to people in the particular industries finding out how good something works what the, what's the longevity on parts and i've settled with the creality ender 3 When I decided to buy this, I got it from Amazon, had it delivered, it arrived on Saturday, just gone, and I decided to assemble it. Now, there's a few things when you come to assemble it, and anybody that has a Creality Ender 3 will probably know the instruction manual is garbage. So, you, it's split up into all these photos, you follow the photos and try and connect everything the best possible way that you can. It's quite, at least I find it quite difficult to sort of do that. I like a, a written set of instructions as well as diagrams to take me through it. Now, the pictures, there's no actual explanation next to the pictures uh, of what goes where, and it's quite easy for the pictures to be mistaken because a lot of these parts actually look quite similar, even though they're different. So it took me about three and a half hours to assemble the whole thing. I was happy with it after that, and the whole process was, well, it could have been a lot easier if there was a bit more explanation in the manual. Then one th other thing as well I've got to say is when you when you do assemble your printer make sure it's on a very very steady table. If you have anything that rocks even if it's slightly it will alter the print or the finished value of the print. It's not going to be as sturdy, the lines aren't going to be straight, the pixelization is going to be awful. So once it was assembled, the next thing to do was to actually find out where I went from there. So I jumped online, I looked for the Ender 3 manual. Oh, by the way, all of these stuff you can find in the description. I've linked everything in there because it's so, so much of a nightmare to find it. If you're watching this video, look in the description, you'll see everything inside there. So as I was saying, I jumped online, got the PDF manual, I decided to have a look at it, and then it told you once the assembly had finished, then it went into everything else that you have to do. So from that point then I decided that I wanted to at least do a test print. Now I knew from talking to people that on the SD card that comes with the Ender 3 is a test print. It's a little 3D dog. So I thought, great, this way I'll see whether it's set up correctly, whether I have to alter the bed. At this point, I was going into it pretty clueless, didn't have much of a clue, just wanted to see what it was going to look like. Now, I had learned that from uh, previous experiences with other things, that if you get a perfect print or if you get a perfect cut, then essentially your printer or your cutter is essentially ca calibrated to a point. So I wanted to see what this dog was going to look like. So I set about getting it going. <coughs> And I clicked print, and after about three, four hours, the whole dog was, was ready. And then I looked at it, I thought, wow, that's actually really cool. And I started to get a couple of uh, a couple of STL files off the internet from Thingiverse. Then I decided, right, okay, well, I needed to use a piece of software. And the software that I use is Ult uh, Ultimaker Q Acura. Uh, there's so many different pieces of software out there. I just wanted something I could snap into quickly. I also use Google SketchUp as well. But Cura I use just for changing my STL files into G-code files. Because you have to do that in order to print. I've tried to print STL files and it does not work. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know. But as soon as I change it to G-code, it prints without any problem at all. Then I started printing and I started realising that something wasn't right. Something wasn't right with the bed. So I jumped online and I got in in touch with this guy, this Canadian uh, Canadian fella on uh, on his YouTube channel called Chip. And again, I've got his link in the description, same as everything else. And this guy is absolutely fantastic. 
What he said was he was using the exact printer that I've got, the Ender 3, and he said, your bed isn't level. So he has actually devised his own Thingiverse um, print that you can go through as part of a calibration process. And nothing actually prints, but it calibrates the head and the bed. And essentially what you've got to do, now this isn't me, this is Chip, that guy from, from Canada. I'm not going to take any sort of credit. That's not That's not me, I don't do that. Essentially what you do is, and you can see it all on his YouTube channel, I've linked the video underneath, you will lay a bit of paper on the bed and as you have four points where your uh, where your nozzle will come down and touch and essentially you move the paper a little bit and if there's a little bit of resistance then you know your printer is calibrated correctly and then lastly on the fifth point it'll go into the center of the bed and then you shouldn't have to alter the bed at all it should be nice and taut so i did that and i started printing and the print came out perfectly now, for best printing results, I would say level the bed, that's an absolute must. And secondly, preheat your PLA. Now, when you go to print, it'll always preheat your PLA and it'll preheat the bed as well. But still, I like to preheat it first and then I will go through the motion of going into the SD card and I'll, I'll choose whatever I want to print. It's only a couple more seconds, but what I, what I found with mine is by the time I click preheat and then go into the SD card and click a print, I've already heated up, so there's no time to waste. The plastic, the PLE, comes out perfectly and starts to draw without there being any issue. Now, the first couple of things I printed were parts for this particular printer. Now, you've seen a couple of tools I've I've printed as well. I've gone on to Thingiverse and I've got those, those, those tools down. Uh, a couple of them being, now, this is one of the main issues with the Ender 3, and it's the fan. The fan sits upright, so any filament can drop into the fan. That is berserk. So I printed one of these. On Thingiverse. Uh, and essentially it's just a fan cover. That's all it is. It's just an exhaust cover and you're just directing the, uh, the, 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 the exhaust vent straight out and across. It actually quietens the fan quite a bit as well. And I haven't found that there's any sort of overheating issue or anything at all. If you hold your hand to the end, you can feel the air coming out there quite easy. There's a couple of different versions of this that I've printed. One with the slats and one without. You choose, see exactly what you prefer. And then because you get a lot of tools with your 3D printer, I printed a tray. And this has a little ender uh, dragon on it as well. And this little tray just fits underneath the uh, the printer, holds my screwdrivers and a couple of other things as well. This takes a long time to print, but the quality at the end of it is totally worth it. It is a beautiful, beautiful bit of kit. And the pixelization as well is just right. As well as printing a couple of test prints, you saw the dog earlier. There is the boat as well. The little, uh, the little boat which is synonymous with 3D printing and you can get this again from Thingiverse or from any other site and uh, it's a nice little print because it's a complicated print. It looks simple but it's very complicated for the printer to actually perform. Uh, now, as I said as well, I've printed parts. There are a couple of parts that, that will wear and tear. I have printed a couple of things as well. It may, they may not be of any use but still I like to have them here in case I am in, in, because I am going to be hammering this in case it does actually uh, break down or parts do break. So just to recap, we've looked at the assembly, we've looked at the manual, we've looked at that calibration of your, of your bed, we've looked at the first few prints that I printed and why, we've looked at so many things in this video. It's going to come to a close very soon, but what I just wanted to just highlight as well is the fact that there are a couple of other things I have got to print and there's a couple of other things with this particular printer that annoy me. One of them is the fan that sticks up. Now this isn't the Pro model and the reason I didn't go for the Pro model is because the fan sits down and there's no riser. So the fan is on, is dead against the, um, the the table that you have it on. So any air is going to build up and it can't escape properly. So I decided to go for the three based on that for one. The prints aren't that di much different at all. I mean, this is watching various different YouTube videos and they look to be exact, exactly the same. Uh, three as well, because the Ender 3 has been around for a lot longer than the Pro and it had a lot more reviews against it and it actually looked like something that was going to last quite a while and the parts are everywhere. I've just bought a load of parts from Banggood for extra hoses, cables, um, 
filament nozzles everything just so that i can have a good load of it here should anything go wrong so i can quickly change out the parts and get it back up and running so that's pretty much everything i wanted to talk to you about regarding me as a first time brand new person beginner rather brand new person as a beginner to 3d printing as well as to the end of three as well i think now i've had it for five days i think it's a fantastic printer it really works well i haven't had any issues since calibrating so far touch wood uh, every print that I've created has come out well, very well. You can see from the photos in the beginning of the video, as well as the video, uh, the videos as well that I've popped in through here. So far, I'm very, very happy. I can't complain. I'm going to be doing a lot more with this. I'm going to be bringing a lot more videos to the channel. Uh, we're going to see exactly where this is going to go. I'm really excited. Uh, I hope you are as well. So I tell you what, folks, I'm going to leave that there. I hope this has helped you. I hope you will enjoy this. Thank you ever so much for watching and listening, my friends. I am JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and hit that bell as well hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends happy printing